This episode of Life Hacker is brought to you by HostGator. Hi and welcome to Life Hacker. This week we're going to be getting you ready for Thanksgiving. We're going to plan out your Thanksgiving shopping and plan your meal so it comes off without a hitch. Maximize holiday leftovers with a few leftover recipes and run down this week's news. So let's get started. This week on Lifehacker, we took a look at Apple's newly launched iTunes Match service. Unlike Spotify or RDO, it doesn't allow you to stream your library on the go. Rather, Apple allows you to keep most of your music collection in the cloud for re-downloading at 25 bucks a year. It's a good option if you live in iOS or iTunes, and in some cases, Apple's backup will actually be a higher bitrate file than your local copy. It's quite a bit different from the Amazon Cloud Music Locker or Google Music, both of which force you to manually upload your tracks, but it doesn't allow true streaming on the go, or at least not in the way that those services do. Depending on your needs, it might be right for you, so check out the post for more details. Speaking of Google Music, Google dropped the beta tag and officially launched their music service. It's now open to everyone without an invite, and allows anyone to upload their first 20,000 songs for free, available for streaming in any browser or the Android Music app. They also added the ability to purchase tracks through the Android Market, which are immediately added to your library, and are even available for sharing on Google+. Check it out, and while you're at it, why don't you install my very own Music Plus extension for Chrome that makes the service even better. Lastly, profanity. Now, we try to avoid swearing on the Lifehacker show, and there are a lot of people who get offended by bad language, but a well-placed curse or two can add emphasis like nothing else. I tried to break down some use cases for swearing, figured out when to avoid it and how to use it, and more. Whether you're pro-swearing or anti-swearing, check out the post for details and let us know where you stand. If you've ever hosted a Thanksgiving meal for a lot of people, you know there are two big challenges you have to deal with. First, you have to make sure you have enough food to accommodate everyone in your party, and second, you have to figure out how to plan everything together so that when you're done cooking, all the food's ready to serve at the same time. Luckily, there are some tools that can help you out with both of these problems. To help with your food purchasing, you might want to try out one of the many available Thanksgiving shopping calculators online. We like this one from a user on Instructables. Basically, you enter in your number of guests, both turkey eating and vegetarian, and uh, a few of the other things that you're planning on cooking, and it will automatically generate how much you need to buy when you head out on your shopping trip. To address your planning challenge, try out Tom's Planner. Tom's Planner allows you to create Gantt charts, which if you are unfamiliar with them, are what project managers use to plan out giant projects. Tom's Planner has a holiday specific chart already laid out to help you get started, and basically it just sort of lays out everything from preparation to cooking up to the point where you're serving your meal. So there you have it. When Thanksgiving rolls around, you can spend less time worrying about the food and more time worrying about your family. Prepping an enormous Thanksgiving dinner can take a lot of time, and if you'd rather spend time with your family than slave away in the kitchen, there are a few things you can do to make it go a little faster. If you love cooking and you want to go all out with this extravagant home-cooked meal, that's fine. But if you're not necessarily a master in the kitchen, you can cut corners in a few places and still make a pretty great dinner. For starters, if you've already got your shopping list all set up but you don't want to stand in line for hours at the store, you can actually probably get most of that delivered. Lots of grocery stores will deliver right to your house, and then you can spend that time working on other things. A lot of lower profile items, like cranberry sauce, can be bought in the store and you don't really need to spend a lot of time on them. Similarly, a lot of people think pumpkin pie tastes just as good out of a can as it does if you were to scoop the entire pumpkin out yourself. Or you can just buy one from your favorite pie shop. Lastly, don't be afraid to enlist your friends and family for help, whether it be for cooking or for cleanup. Many hands make light work, and that way you all still get to spend time together. Hit the link for more Thanksgiving prep tips from Lifehack.
of the best parts about Thanksgiving dinner is having an enormous amount of food left over for you to eat over the next few days. Now, most of this can stay out for about one or two hours after dinner, but then it's time to put it in the fridge so it stays safe. All of these things are gonna keep for different amounts of time though, so you wanna make sure that you're not eating anything past its Thanksgiving expiration date. Most of your regular Thanksgiving foods, like turkey, stuffing, pie, and potatoes, will stay in the fridge for three to four days and be fine. Cranberry sauce will last you about two weeks, but gravy, unfortunately, will only last you one or two days, so you wanna eat that as fast as possible. Wine will last about three or four days, depending on how much is in the bottle, but if you only have a little bit left, you're probably better off freezing it. That way, you can use it for cooking later on instead. So, there you have it. Enjoy your Thanksgiving leftovers and stay safe. One of the more pathetic Thanksgiving meals is reheating pizza, but if you want to do it the right way, you do it with parchment paper. Putting a little parchment paper around or just under your slice of pizza will make it a lot crispier when it comes out of the microwave. To demonstrate, we have two slices here. We put the parchment paper under one, and we'll see which one comes out a little bit crispier. All right, let's see what we've got here. Now we've got the two slices of pizza. As you can see on this one, it's gotten a little soggy because the oil's been dripping around the plate. You can see on the plate there, it's been coming underneath the pizza slice, which is making it a little bit more soggy. Then on this one, however, we have slightly less oil seepage because of the parchment paper, which is catching it and keeping it in place. Now you're gonna get better results with a thicker crust, obviously, because it's less floppy to begin with, but if you're stuck with having pizza um, on Thanksgiving and you need to warm it up, better that it's fresh using parchment paper in the microwave. Hungry? Thirsty? The refreshment stand is open. Looking for a new web hosting solution? Then check out HostGator. HostGator can get your blog or website up and running in minutes. Plans start at just $4.95 per month and include free 24-7 support, access to robust website building tools, and they'll even migrate your current site for free. HostGator also offers you a 45-day money-back guarantee, unlimited disk space and bandwidth, and a $100 Google AdWords credit to market your site. Best of all, HostGator is offering Lifehacker viewers 25% off your order or your first month free. Just go to www.hostgator.com and enter the code LIFEHACKER at checkout. And now, it's showtime. So the clock is ticking and you are running out of time to use your Thanksgiving leftovers. One obvious solution is making a turkey sandwich out of the leftover chunks, but if you have just a few scraps, there are other things you can do as well. For example, if you can chop it up, you can make turkey dumplings, you can also make any sort of turkey soup. Really anything you can put pieces of turkey in uh, is an option. Aside from just turkey, you can also put, for example, your cranberry sauce on the sandwich. But if you don't want to do that, you can put cranberry sauce on your yogurt in the morning, or you can make cranberry sauce muffins, or really anything else that you would like cranberries on top of. Basically, get creative. Uh, you can always look up recipes based on cranberry sauce, turkey, stuffing, whatever, online to use your leftovers. There are plenty of options, but those are a couple. And check out the link on your screen for the recipes that we found. All right, it's time for the downloads of the day. Let's see what we've got. There aren't many Thanksgiving specific downloads, but one thing that can make a long day of cooking much better is a recipe manager. We've rounded up the top five reader choices in our High Five offering web apps and software alike. Check it out if you want to find a recipe manager that suits you best. Post Thanksgiving, you're likely in for a shopping trip, and those are much easier to manage if you've prepared your smartphone for the job. We've put together a list of the best shopping apps available for Android and iPhone so you can better manage your trip to the mall or find a hefty discount online. For those of you not in the Thanksgiving spirit, we've got some regular downloads for you too. First, Simplier for Mac. It's a tiny little music player that's fast and simple. If you don't need the power iTunes provides and just want to play your music without the heft, you should check it out. If you're looking for a full-fledged iTunes replacement, however, check out on Q. Next up is Tin Eye Client for Windows. You've probably used the Tin Eye service, but if you haven't, it's basically a search engine that lets you search using an image. It then finds similar images and provides you with links. This is great for finding larger versions of wallpapers. Tin Eye Client brings the same functionality to Windows Explorer, so all you have to do is right-click an image to get the results. Finally, we have Announceify for Chrome. If you're not in the mood to read an article online, just click on Announceify's icon and it'll read the text for you. It'll even highlight what it's reading so you can follow along in the text if you wish. And that's it for this week. 
Have a great holiday. Thirty six J outro Thanksgiving mark. And that's it for this week. Have a great holiday. And that's it for this week. I hate your family. <laughs> we'll use the second one. But you also don't have to get rid of your cranberry sauce, even if it's a delicious sliced can option. Mmm. <laughs> I really don't want to eat that.